Hello, everyone. I'm Eric D'Souza, and today we're talking to Brenda Gale um, as we continue our series of interviews with members of Prime Writers of Canada who have been shortlisted for the 2022 Awards of Excellence. Brenda Gale has been nominated for the Best Crime Novella category, sponsored by Mystery Magazine, for her book, Murder in Abstract, a Charlie Hall Mystery, book number five, published by Bow Street Books. Thank you for joining us today, Brenda. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, you and I were communicating briefly by email, uh, and you were telling me that you've recently published uh, the sixth book in your Charlie Hall Mystery, and that you had published all six of those books within 18 months. Now, I'm assuming that was a typo, uh, but if not, uh, how did you pull that off? Uh, well, I did publish them all within uh, about uh, 16, 18 months. I didn't write them all within that. I wrote um, the first two pretty much were done um, when the, about the time the pandemic hit. And then the rest of the time, uh, there really wasn't much else to do. What had happened before is that I would write in the morning and then in the afternoon if I felt like, you know, just taking off and doing my own thing or binge watching Netflix or whatever. Nobody knew. And then suddenly the pandemic hit and I had a house full of people. My husband was working from home. My son was doing from school from home. His girlfriend was here doing school from home. I had a house full of people and I had to look busy, right? So the easiest thing to do was just to keep writing books, which is what I did. So then I... Um, published the first four in uh, the fall of uh, 2020 and then I published book five uh, murder and abstract in uh, 2021 and then just this past January I published book six uh, schooled in murder so you see my productivity is is getting a little lower as life is starting to resume <laughs> um does that mean uh you're gonna can you write a little even maybe a slower pace or are we gonna try your hand at something different um, I am going to continue with the series, um, but at the moment I've taken a bit of a break and I'm working on um, a standalone uh, mystery book that's based on a bit of a, a legacy um, story that's been in my family for a lot of years. So, But it's also set in the 20th century, so I seem to like the mid 20th century period for writing books. Oh, okay. Um, are all the books you've written, or at least in the series, are they all novellas? Uh, no, Schooled and Murder is a little bit longer. So with the novellas, they're borderline novella novels, sort of depends where you draw the line. They're, they tend to be around 45 to 50,000 words. Um, Schooled and Murder, the one I just wrote is just, I think it's about 52,000 words. So. Oh, okay. So you're always sort of towing the line. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess in a lot of ways it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's just a label. Um, I personally love novellas. Um, some of my favorite books are novellas um, are Metamorphosis. Strange, mm -hmm. um, again, I love them, but I, I know from the industry standpoint, they're hard to market and they're hard to sell. So is there something that draws you to that? You know, the 40,000 words? Like, it's it's a nice like, it up? Yeah, it's a nice length to write. I think it's a nice length to read, especially these are historical mysteries and sort of the cozy historical mysteries tend to be a little bit more on the shorter side than let's say the, the thrillers. Um, yeah, when I first published them, I first published them as eBooks and then, uh, and then they were moved into to print. So it just was just seemed easier. <laughs> <laughs> good reason too. I know the, sto um, the story. The stories just come out come out that length, right? I mean, I I think that I should write a little bit longer or I should write a little bit shorter, but it's just they all tend to come out around forty five to fifty five thousand words. So, yeah, I mean that's good advice. Is like my current one that I'm working on is sitting exactly at fifty thousand words, and I'm like, I need ten more ten thousand more words, but I guess I don't, do I? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't think readers really care that much. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, they like a good story. They like to, when they finish the book, they want to feel satisfied. And if that happens at 45,000 words, that's great. If it happens at 80,000 words, that's great. But, you know, the, the, it has to serve the story, I think. <laughs> good advice, Brenda. Um, well, let's talk about the fifth book. Um, it's sort of our jobs as writers to make life difficult for our protagonist. And uh, from what I've read, you seem to be very good at your job. So what could you tell us about Charlie Hall and what she has to go through in Murder and Abstract? Yeah, so so Charlie's sort of, by the time book five rolls around, um, she's, she's sort of 
experience a lot of changes. So it stories, the series takes place after the Second World War. Um, she loses uh, her prize job on the city beat of the newspaper and is sort of demoted down to the women's pages, which she's not really happy about. Um, but she's making it work for herself. She's trying to figure out where she fits in a society that's that's kind of, that's changing. Um, she's had a lot of freedom during the war, and now you know everyone's saying, "No, no, you need to step aside and let the men take over." Mm -hmm. So she winds up at this doing this art gallery, um, not really a gallery, it's a home exhibit of a, of a local artist, and she has a family connection to the artist as well. And then suddenly, for some unknown reason, two bands of thieves are interested in the artwork and try to steal it, which no one can figure out why, because this is a totally unknown artist. And uh, it kind of goes from there. She has to solve the crime. And in the, in the process, she is dealing with a lot of emotional baggage because she knows the family where the uh, who were involved with the art. Um, well, you've mentioned the time. So it's uh, 1949, just after the war, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. But your book's also set in Kingston. I don't know much about Kingston uh, other than uh, you have to drive through it if you're going from Montreal to Toronto and back. Uh, obviously the home of the hip, but mm -hmm. they're not alive yet. <laughs> and uh, I interviewed Catherine uh, Fogarty yesterday and we talked about the notorious Kingston penitentiary. Penitentiary, yeah. But, but other than that, I, I know very little about it. So was there a reason why you chose to set your story in Kingston as opposed to maybe like Toronto or Montreal? Um, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, Kingston is a beautiful little town. Um, it's uh, like I live in Ottawa, so it's about a two hour drive from here. So it's great to go down and do research. It had the prisons, um, Kingston Penitentiary, the women's prison. There was an asylum there. It has hospitals there. It has uh, old Fort Henry and the military base. Um, so, so from that standpoint, there's just tons of opportunity for various um, plots and interesting characters. Um, the other thing is that my sister lives in Kingston, so I had to stay if I wanted to go um, do some research. But also my daughter was going to Queens at the time. And so I thought this is a perfect opportunity to go down and spend time there and check up on her without <laughs> her necessarily knowing that I was checking up on her. Right? <laughs> so, um, but no, really, King Kingston is just a, a beautiful, beautiful town. Right, and uh, I just think there's just a lot of opportunity for, for great stories there. So, well, definitely sounds that I'm sold. <laughs> so, yeah, you uh, have to spend some time there. It's it's great. I've driven through it many times when I was younger. But, uh, unless traffic was bad on the highway, I don't think we ever stopped to get it. No. <laughs> um, well, uh, I guess that's it today, Brenda. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you today and meeting you for the first time. Um, the awards are coming up next week, so uh, fingers crossed for you. Thank you. And, uh, that should be, uh, sounds like your entire series is a lot of fun, so I, I might have to pick them up, starting from book one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lovely talking to you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to everyone watching.